The Fallout universe is known for its scale, its retro-futuristic technology that is largely based on the invention and popularization of nuclear fusion, the unmistakably creepy music and grit, a lot of it. In this harsh yet often weirdly beautiful post-apocalyptic world, survival often hinges on finding refuge in the form of a vault. The vault is often a place where your story as the player starts. But there are also places that often hide advanced tech, the much needed refuge and supplies as much as the more sinister agendas. Humans are incredibly fragile when it comes to our ability to survive in harsh environments, whether that is caused by heat and humidity or radiation. And though humans on the surface of the Fallout universe have actually figured out a way to live much longer than we can today, it's not without some unwanted side effects either. And this is where the technology invented by vault in the form of its underground shelters is featured so prominently in both the Fallout video games and the recent Amazon Prime adaptation. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend that you do. But beyond their fictional allure, could such vaults truly sustain life? And what might their impact be on our mental and physical well-being? The first Fallout game was released on September 30th, 1997. Since then, we've had 10 releases on different platforms and in different formats, and most recently a TV adaptation on Amazon Prime. The game has definitely gone through a lot in its shape and form and deepening its lore to incredible levels. In total, vault built 122 underground shelters, each costing billions to make. Out of 122, only 17 were designed to work as intended, meaning they were just vaults, the main function of which was to offer its population shelter from the outside world, focusing on the longevity and happiness of its population. The rest, well, not so much. The other 105 vaults had a more sinister purpose, but that is for another story, or you can just play the games. In the TV show, we are introduced to vaults 31, 32 and 33. Unlike other vaults, these three are essentially connected with a bridging section, but maintained independence with the exception of certain situations. Now, I'm not gonna go into some deep spoilers here, but in essence, the 32 and 33 were just breeding pools to keep the population docile. All overseers of 32 and 33 were junior executives from Vault 31, vacant periodically and transferred to the vaults before replacing their predecessors. And yes, it's not ideal, but the show as well as the games gave us a pretty good look at the way these vaults functioned and the way they were structured. Underground bunkers are nothing special. There was a bunch of them built during the Cold War era for many government officials as well as the public, whether in the US or other countries. And there are even private companies that still sell the luxurious versions to the rich and famous today. And while some of them may look absolutely amazing, none of them are anywhere near the level of the vault subterranean complexes. They are essentially marvels of engineering, meticulously designed to provide for the needs of their inhabitants in the face of apocalyptic adversity, not just for years or decades, but indefinitely. At the heart of every vault lies a foundation of sturdy construction, engineered to withstand the ravages of time and the relentless pressure of the earth above. Reinforced concrete, walls and ceilings offer protection from external threats, while advanced sealing mechanisms ensure airtight containment against radiation and other environmental hazards. You could further see this in the fact that the exit area is usually on a completely separate level from the rest of the vault, presumably further separated by redundancy systems. How deep each vault actually goes is never really explained, but based on what we know, vault -Tech designed these vaults to sustain up to thousand people at a time, which immediately calls for some incredible level of engineering and probably not something that we would entirely be able to replicate today. Beneath the surface, a labyrinth of corridors and chambers 
houses the essential systems that sustain life within the vault. Air filtration units purify recycled air, removing contaminants and replenishing oxygen levels to maintain a breathable atmosphere. This is most likely no different from the systems that we have available today, especially with the latest technology of air scrubbers or technologies developed for a colony on Mars, a device known as MOXIE, which is currently being tested as part of the Mars Perseverance rover. The machine has actually been running tests and experiments for two years now. The average person needs five liters of water a day to survive in a moderate climate with little activity. And though you may think that you would never drink that much, this includes all the water contained in your food, the air you breathe, all your coffees, fruit, and veg. An average American uses 350 to 700 liters of water a day. Globally, we consume around 4 trillion cubic meters of fresh water a year, and that includes most of the world suffering from the lack of it. For a vault to sustain a tightly controlled population of 1,000 people, water purification facilities would be a must to ensure a steady supply of clean drinking water, while hydroponic gardens and food storage facilities provide sustenance for the vault's inhabitants. In a world fraught with danger, security is paramount to the survival of the vault community. And though with an airtight entry point and shielding that could sustain a nuclear blast on the surface, any security would play a secondary role with surveillance cameras, automated turrets and robust blast doors. Access controls and biometric scanners further fortify the perimeter, ensuring that only authorized personnel may enter or exit the facility. In a way, this would be more akin to a high security prison, where much of the surveillance and security plays an internal role, with oversight over its own inhabitants. Despite the confines of their subterranean abode, Vault dwellers would find solace in the semblance of normalcy through recreational activities and communal spaces, common areas equipped with entertainment consoles and leisure activities that foster social interactions and camaraderie among residents provide respite from monotony of underground life. And lastly, you'd have all of your scientific sections that would focus on research and education, education of the new generations, etc. Technical and logistical problems aside though, could humans actually exist underground for decades or even centuries? There are instances of cities that have been built into the earth and today we actually already know that yes, humans could absolutely adapt and live underground. Throughout history, humans have intermittently sought refuge underground, a tradition dating back millions of years. Evidence of our subterranean past is etched in cave paintings depicting handprints and hunting scenes. In the present-day Tunisia, a significant number of individuals reside in what the Atlantic describes as crater-like homes, featuring rooms carved into the earth surrounding a central circle patio that exposes them to sky. Meanwhile, in Cobra Petty, Australia, inhabitants of the Daga village attend services in an underground cathedral and tourists lodge in sediment-strict hotel rooms. This trend of subterranean habitation persists with various cities embracing underground development to address diverse needs. In northern regions, intricate networks of tunnels, aptly termed shadow cities, offer respite from harsh winters. Beijing exemplifies this trend on a grand scale with approximately a million residents dwelling in nuclear fallout shelters nestled beneath the bustling cityscape. Similarly, metropolis like London and Mexico City are exploring subterranean expansions as alternatives to conventional sprawls and towering structures. However, the notion of humans exclusively inhabiting underground spaces remain largely unprecedented and challenging to comprehend. Nevertheless, experts suggest that with thoughtful design and robust psychological support, humans could adapt to such environments. However, the design of each vault would have to be more than just functional. Humans can survive in extreme environments such as submarines, maybe even spaceships, which is actually currently being tested by different space agencies around the world. But when we talk about multi-generational health, 
That is something else. Humans are incredibly resilient. There have been five mass extinction events in Earth's history, at least since 500 million years ago. But in all of Earth's history, humans now not only became the dominant life form, but one that would most likely have the ability to survive almost any mass extinction on the planet. In this sense, you could say that right now we are our only survival threat. Depending on the type of person that you are, the human psyche is subject to a crucible of existential challenges and emotional upheaval. Consigned to a life lived in a shadowy embrace of underground confinement, any vault dwellers would inevitably grapple with the profound implications of their isolation from the outside world. The inherent confines of vault architecture could evoke feelings of claustrophobia and entrapment. The absence of natural light and the idea of subterranean existence may exacerbate these sensations, leading some people to anxiety and panic attacks, and other manifestations of psychological distress, especially as time goes on. And despite the proximity of fellow vault dwellers, there's a risk that loneliness would still loom large in the absence of external stimuli and the monotony of underground life, which could foster feelings of social isolation and emotional detachment. But things like cabin fever and feelings of agitation, any existential angst and identity crisis when confronted with the stark realities of post-apocalyptic existence could largely be eliminated with a well-structured community. We've already mentioned that Voltec vaults had the capacity of 1,000 people, which in the case of decades or hundreds of years also counts for any death rate and birth rate. In this sense, a lot of psychological problems could diminish over time, especially as later generations would quite literally be born into this subterranean environment. When it comes to architecture, it's always an intricate dance between form and function. Architecture often emerges as a powerful force shaping the contours of our lived experience, from the soaring heights of skyscrapers to the intimate embrace of domestic dwellings. The space that we inhabit exerts a profound influence on our mental health and well-being. And this is where we can see just how important is the cohesion between function and form. There's a well-known concept of biophilic design, the connection with nature. At the heart of the biophilic design lies a deep-seated longing for a connection with the natural world. It's this primal yearning that has been encoded into our nature over millennia through our evolution and adaptation to natural environments. By incorporating elements of nature into built environments, such as natural light, greenery, and flowing waters, architects often seek to evoke a sense of tranquility, vitality, and harmony that resonates with our innate biophilia. Light and space would be second on my list. Natural light would not be an option, and most artificial lights are insufficient to simulate all wavelengths of sunlight. And even though we do actually have lights that are able to replicate the full spectrum, smart lighting and strategic placement of lights would be necessary to give inhabitants of vaults the sense of warmth, openness, and vitality. In this show, they deal with this by simulating the circadian cycle in this main congregation area, where you see them projecting a simulated exterior on a backdrop of this large room. These sorts of techniques are already well tested and very well understood. The abundance of light and its color and intensity play very important role in not only how we perceive our living spaces, but our moods too. Architectural design plays an important role in delineating boundaries of privacy and fostering a sense of sanctuary within the built environment. From secluded alcoves and intimate nooks and crannies to amazing views, these spatial configurations of our living spaces shape the contours of our inner landscape. 
Christopher Alexander once said, the quality of the environment shapes the quality of life. From the depths of subterranean sanctuaries like the fallout vaults, to soaring heights of urban skylines like the ones in Dubai, architecture serves as a mirror reflecting the contours of our collective consciousness. By embracing the principles of biophilic design, social equity and environmental stewardship, even now, we are able to create living spaces that nurture the body, mind and the spirit in harmony with the natural world, whether that's the deep recesses of our planet or on Mars. Humans have the power to control not only our survival, but our mental and emotional health through smart approach to our living environments. In the words of visionary architect Buckminster Fuller, we are called to be architects of the future not its victims. So let us rise to the challenge and build a world where the dreams of yesterday meet the realities of tomorrow.